Hi, everybody. It is Thursday, December 14th. Um, I haven't been on since we had the premiere of our film. And uh, it's uh, it was a thrilling evening. I mean, it's so still kind of surreal that this even happened uh, for, you know, me and the guys. You know, we've always just been, you know, just happy to be working, you know, and to see this focus now on us has been pretty amazing. And then some people called yesterday, got to go get a copy of the LA Times. You guys are in it. And there's a really nice spread in there with pictures and everything about the movie and about us in the LA Times newspaper. It's crazy. It's just nuts. But um, I'm really proud of what, what, what this represents. And I'm really proud of Denny Tedesco and the entire production and technical team that put this whole thing together. Uh, the band is content, you know, they, you know, we talked and stuff, but they really did the grunt work, especially the, uh, the work they had to do during the course of making this while COVID was running, you know, ferocious, uh, trying to get interviews and stuff with people that really did not want to be leaving their house or anything like that. So it was a, it was a, certainly a challenge for the, for the production team, but they did an amazing job. And now it's going to be available on all, a ton of the streaming platforms. I'm hoping that some of those platforms will uh, allow it to be seen overseas, which would be great. I really hope that happens because I just hate that there's always that differentiation that goes on. So I'm hoping that'll happen, but that's out of my control. So I'm just going to throw it out at them and just say, please. You know, but I think that's Magnolia and the platforms that decide that. Um, so that's all good. Um, got a bunch of stuff going on here. Been doing a bunch of cameos uh, for people for Christmas and birthday shout outs. And it's been really fun to do that. We had a great uh, uh, Zoom yesterday, uh, Clubhouse Zoom. And then this coming Wednesday, next Wednesday, um, will be a uh, our Clubhouse live stream. So that'll be the, probably the last one of the year. Uh, at that point. So I'm looking forward to that and I'm looking forward to um, just all kinds of stuff. Uh, sa this Saturday, the the um, 16th is mornings and my anniversary. And uh, so we'll be doing a, a, a small celebration. She's gotten, a, we went and saw the a doctor, her surgeon at Keck the other day, and he said she's healing incredibly well and he's really happy and he gave her some goals to look towards in terms of getting rid of the walker within the next period of time and medications and, and all that stuff. But he's really pleased with her progress. So that's great, you know, because I see things and every, you know, in the friends that come by see things, but it's better when the doctor sees it because he knows exactly what benchmarks he's looking towards. And uh, tomorrow she starts outpatient physical therapy for six weeks. So that should help a great deal too. So Everything's good. It's been really fun visiting like Linda Ronstadt and, and Daryl Hall and John Oates and all this in this past time. I'm going to do some more Hall and Oates right now. I loved working with those guys, but I'm not going to play along. I'm kind of in, got so much going on today. I really didn't have the time to hunker down on a tune. So I'm just going to play some of the songs I worked on with the guys because I really like just sitting and listening to them too and not thinking about playing. So I'm going to do a, a few songs from the uh, Beauty on a Backstreet album that I did with them in 1977. God, lo and behold, the mail those many years ago. Um, I will give you some credits here on this. It was arranged by Chris Bond, Daryl Hall, and John Oates. Uh, strings uh, were uh, conducted and arranged by Christopher Bond. Uh, I'm on bass on these tracks. I think Scott Edwards played on... Two of, two of the other tracks, I think, uh, but I'm listed on these tracks. Uh, drums on this one are the great Jeff Picaro, uh, engineered by Linda Tyler and John Mills. Uh, the keyboard, synthesizer, mandolin were Daryl Hall. Um, uh, let's see, percussion effects were Gary Coleman. Uh, Hold on, let me move this over. The strings were recorded by the great Armin Steiner. A rhythm guitar, um, mando guitar. Sorry, I'm just 
Looking over here, electric piano, John Oates, and the vocals are Dara Hall and John Oates. When I'm doing these, I got my phone sitting, leaning against my computer screen, so I can read the credits off of that, but sometimes I look and the phone is in front of these. But, I, you know, I forget that I can actually scroll up and see it and not have to move the stupid thing. Okay, that's my problem here, but that's okay. We did this at Sound Lab Studios, which is Armin Steiner's studio. It's no longer there. It was mixed at Sound Labs, and then uh, they did a remix at the Hit Factory. Um, I think that's really uh, about it on here. Oh, it's funny. It says on, on notes on here, it says, Lee Sklar appears courtesy of The Section and Capitol Records. I'd never seen that on anything before. How funny. Okay, let's see. So I'm going to go ahead now, and um, I'll start with Don't Change. That's the name of this track, and it was written by Daryl Hall, and the words are Daryl Hall, John Oates, and Sarah Allen. I believe all the Sarah Allen credits on this are for Sarah, the, the girl who Sarah Smile was written about. So let's uh, go here. This is Don't Change. Let me find this one. Here we go. So here we go. Daryl Hall and John Oates, Beauty on a Back Street, and the track is Don't Change. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, I love it. Uh, I mean, it's just it was so much fun with these guys. Let's see. Let me let me find us another song here. Okay, this is You Must Be Good for Something, and this is the, the backing vocals on this are Tommy Mottola and Christopher Bond, the music by Daryl Hall, and the words by Daryl Hall and John Oates. So You Must Be Good for Something. Here we go. <laughs> See what else we got here. Okay, let me give some credits. Uh, this one's called "Why Do Lovers Break Each Other's Heart." Uh, background vocals on this one are Chris Bond, and the music is Daryl Hall, and the words by Daryl and Sarah Allen. So here we go. Why do lovers break each other's hearts? <laughs> Nice old school vibe on this one.
Yeah. Yeah, nice old school vibe to that. Let's see. Let's do one more here. Let me see what we got here. Okay, I'm going to do Bigger Than Both of Us. This is the music by Daryl Hall and the words by Daryl Hall and John Oates. So here we go. From the Beauty on a Backstreet album. Love it. 
Really enjoyed playing with those guys. It was so much fun working in the studio with them. And Chris Bond was a remarkable, remarkable guitarist producer. And uh, I miss him. I miss him. I mean, it was an interesting journey that Chris was on because I was uh, out at a Home Depot one day and bumped into a friend of mine. And, uh, and he said to me, did you hear about Chris Bond? And I, I, every time somebody comes up to me and says that, another friend has died. And uh, yeah, I, I said, no, what happened? And he goes, he's now Krista Bond. And apparently he, after all this down here, he left and had a, 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 a change of life, a, a sex change operation and became a woman, which when I finally tracked him down, he was living off the coast of Seattle on one of the islands up there. And we, we re-hooked up and, uh, I, and I, first thing I said to, to her at that point was, are you happy now? And she said, for the first time in my life, I'm really, really happy. Uh, it was a journey that had been a long time coming, apparently, and uh, and it was just it was just great reconnecting, you know. Even though I mean, it was it, it's always interesting. I've, I have a number of friends that have transitioned, and you know, it's always it's always a fascinating journey to be a you know a part of in a way, and and to view it um, from from a slightly different perspective, having somebody that's been a really close friend, and all of a sudden. You know, you're readdressing them in a different way, but you know the, the essence of Chris was in Krista. I mean, he was still a beautiful soul and a great musician and all that, and he was really great hooking up. And then ended up, you know, the the big C came along, and that that was it. But uh, you know, I was glad that when she finally went, she was in in the skin that she felt she was always meant to be. And stuff, but one talented, talented person. When we did the Dodgers in '81, when we went in the studio with the Big Blue Wrecking Crew and uh, did Queens, We Are the Champions. It was Chris who put that together and played guitar and produced that. So a pretty extensive history. Really a remarkable artist unto himself and 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 her later. So, so that's it for today. I am going to get going here. I got a lot of stuff to take care of, and tomorrow morning is going to be an early one too. Once we're still doing interviews for the movie, and and a lot of it's East Coast, so in live. So the the agents from the uh, the movie said, you know, I've got some more uh, interviews, a couple hours of interviews for you in the morning. Hope that's okay. They start at 6 a.m. <laughs> so it's it's great getting up and just uh, thank God they're just phoning. I mean, we're Zooming, but it's just audio. So I don't have to be sitting here all pretty like I really, you know, <laughs> give me a break. So, so that's it. So I'm going to get going. I'll try to get back tomorrow with some more music for you. And um, and just uh, just wishing everybody all the very best. We're getting into an incredibly crazy, stressful time of year. So just try to enjoy it. every sandwich, as Warren Zevon said. And um, and we will uh, just enjoy it all and get through it. So take good care. And I'm I'm out of here. Bye.